Hey, yo, welcome everyone to episode 91 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you for checking us out. If you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us a ton, it helps us continue to grow, bring more interviews, talk about more stuff in the space, and just let more people know about these amazing games that they can get in their arcade or they can play at arcades near them. So this week, I want to really focus in on Indie Arcade games. I know I've had a bunch of interviews with people and I'm going to leave links to all of the videos when I'm talking about the game, but I really want to highlight some of these games, talk a little bit more about what's special about them, what's unique about them, as well as just have one place where most of these games are. There are a few that I'm not going to dive into too much because I haven't heard much about them in a while, but these are going to be the primary ones that you can get or you should check out. So the first game I'm going to talk about is Killer Queen. You you can't really talk about indie arcade games without talking about Killer Queen. Now, Killer Queen is the world's only 10-player arcade strategy game. There's two teams. You've got the blue cabinet and the yellow cabinet. Each are led by a powerful queen. They face off to be the first to bring the giant snail god home, fill their hive with nectar, or assassinate the rival queen. You've got three different ways to win. Strategy game based around joust. And there's a couple little, there's one of the characters there. There's a blue queen over there. And this game was developed by Nikita and Josh. They are the owners of Bumble Bear Studios, which they're based out of New York. And they have a couple other games that they've created, but this is the main one in the franchise. The game started in New York. It was picked up by uh, a handful of journalists, kind of got virality from that and ended up all over the country. You can find them in tons of arcades throughout the U.S. I believe they do have a couple international locations. There may be one in Japan, I think I remember seeing, and maybe one in Paris. Um, but they are a very, very big player in the indie space, and you can't really talk about indie games without talking about them. They have a huge community behind them for the arcade scene with the competitive area, and that's where we go to to show off Galactic Battleground. We do, go to a lot of their tournaments and check out what they've got going on. One really unique thing about Killer Queen is that it's two cabinets. So you have five players on one side, five players on the other side, and you get to mash your button to fly. You can get different power-ups, speed boosts, or wings, so you can become a warrior. And you've got options for how to win, so you need to strategize as a a five-player team, figure out which direction you want to go to win the game, and then you got to execute. I hope your enemy isn't better than you, and really keep your eye on that queen because that queen can wipe out all your warriors very fast. Now, the next game I want to talk about is Galactic Battleground. Now, I'm a little biased here. This is the game that I work with. I've spent a ton of time on this. I love the game. Galactic Battleground is a retro-themed multiplayer space combat arcade game. It has multiple game modes like Warzone and Arena Battle in which you battle head-to-head against multiple players to become the victor. The first game mode that I'm going to talk about is Arena Battle. This is just your standard uh, team deathmatch. All you want to do is pick up power-ups, avoid getting killed by anything on the map. And when I say anything, I mean asteroids, bullets, turrets, planets. Anything that hits you will kill you. Um, You even can kill your own teammate if you figure out how to do that, but try and avoid it. The second game mode that we have on there is... Warzone. Warzone is heavily inspired by Killer Queen. You have three different ways to win. You can either win with the White Dwarf by pushing that across the other line on the enemy's side to explode. You can win by collecting the orbs that come out of the the clouds. And then you can also win just by killing the enemy. You know, if, if you have more lives, you win the game. Um, We've been developing this quite a bit lately. We have multiple different cabinet designs for it. We have our four-player upright Konami which is a beautiful cabinet with the spectator screen. But we also have our four-player cocktail, which we really, really like right now. That's going to be a four-player sit-down, very similar to the Pac-Man Battle Royale cabinet. So you're always playing on the bottom of the screen. It feels very retro and classic to what Galaga is like and what inspired us to make the game in the first place. Now, this was developed by Kelly and Dylan. Um, Kelly did the coding, Dylan did the art. They're a father-son duo, and they run under Slackers, Inc., which I'm a part of Slackers, Inc. I do the sales, the media promotion, and things like that for the game. I love traveling with this game. It's an absolute blast. So if you were thinking about creating a video game, do it. Why not? 
And if the indie game is cool and it goes in an arcade cabinet, it's always a really cool showpiece for trade shows to have your game in an arcade cabinet, even if you aren't planning on producing more cabinets. Now, the third game I want to talk about is Death Ball. Death Ball is just a crazy game. Uh, you and an adversarial wizard do battle to the death with arcade soccer platforming action for a magical implement known only as the Death Ball. So the death ball is your main focus. Wizard soccer is a perfect way to describe this game. This game was created by Tony Hauber. He's out of Iowa and he makes a killer game. This game is super fun as a two player game. It's one button. So it's very simple button joystick. And that one button has a lot of utility. You can use it to jump. You can use it to place a bottle, you, uh, a bubble. You can use it to slide. You can use it to dive. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to play around the opponent. So that is another game that I think deserves some spotlight. There will be some gameplay up. If you want to check out any of the interviews with Tony, I'll have that linked up in the corner. And this is one that you really should check out. This game is in a bunch of arcades across the country, and it's addictive. The second you start playing it, you really enjoy it, and you want to keep playing. The next game that we're going to talk about is Cosmotrons. Cosmotrons is a multiplayer and single player retro arcade styled space shooter where one to four players yell and celebrate as they skillfully pilot a fragile spaceship of their choice in battle against gravity and friends throughout dangerous terrain in a quest for galaxy domination. Now, this game is very interesting. I love Cosmotrons. I think it's super fun. The flight is really unique. So you have to use your thrusters and aim where you're flying. So flight takes a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, the game is super cool. I love the ability to select different ships. So you can pick like a noob ship or a ship that's a little more challenging to use. And they have different attributes, different speed, and you can get different projectiles. So different charge power up moves. This game was created by Dave and Shane. Uh, Shane was the lead design and Dave was the lead programmer. They created this game around 2016, 2017, it has one of the coolest cabinets by far. It's got a very futuristic look to the cabinet. And this is a great addition to any arcade. If you get a chance to play this game, definitely do it because you aren't going to see it in a ton of places, but I believe there are 40 to 50 of them out in the wild. So you should be able to find it and enjoy when you do find it. I'm going to link the, the interview with them as well in the corner right now. The next game is Switch and Shoot, and this was a very unique game in my eyes um, because this is one of the few games in the indie space that was actually an indie game first, found by a cabinet designer, and then brought to the arcade. I think it fits in, in the arcade perfectly. So it was brought to the arcade by Dan, who runs DSM Arcades out of Des Moines, Iowa, and he just really wanted to help indie developers bring their titles to the arcade scene, and I think he did a fantastic job doing that. Switch and Shoot is a one-button space shmup. Um, basically, you blast and dodge your way through a never-ending onslaught of alien bad butts and Switch and Shoot. That's how they describe the game. Um, your ship can't stop shaping, which is a really cool feature. Um, when you hit the button, there's just one button, no joysticks or anything, just one button. When you hit the button, you fire, but you also change direction. So if you were going right, you'll now be going left. If you're going left, you'll be going right. So every time you hit the button, you change directions. So you really have to plan out your next couple moves to avoid the aliens, but also collect the power up so you can move on to the next level. And as you progress through levels, you get to the bosses. This game was developed by Matt Glanville. He's an awesome developer out of England, and he's got a whole bunch of other games. Uh, I'll link the interview with him as well as the interview with Dan, and you guys can check those out. Next. Armed and Gelatinous, um, a fast-paced multiplayer couch cooperative bullet hell space shooter. That's a mouthful. Um, Armed and Gelatinous pits you against your friends in a party game to the end of all party games. And this game is super, super cool because it allows you to pick up a blob and dash through your opponents, controlling one of the four gelatinous blobs in the far reaches of space, picking up weapons filled crates, and basically killing the other blobs with it. You just want to fight. And the more weapons you absorb, the bigger your blob gets, 
slower you move though which is a little bit dangerous because the smaller blobs can dash through you to kill you and take all your weapons and now they're the big guy on the block so that's armed and gelatinous i did interviews with those guys as well they were the first ones to come on the show thank you guys for that uh rob and anthony are the team behind that rob is the coder and anthony is the artist if you guys want to check out that interview i'm going to put it up in the link now the next game black emperor this was an interview that i really enjoyed doing talking to tomas tomas is um, a developer who started in film and decided he wanted to make a video game so he went to a school to learn a little bit about how to make video games he made black emperor which was his first game went through a whole bunch of different iterations with the game and then presented it at a trade show where the team behind killer queen bumble bear uh josh and nikita saw the game they loved the game and they said hey let's bring this to the arcade let's figure out a way to do this black emperor you can think of it as a bozozoku endless runner you're basically a bozozoku driving through the desert on your motorcycle trying to stay on the road you speed up slow down avoid sand and just try to stay alive as long as possible it's a lot easier than it sounds but it's a ton of fun uh, this cabinet has one of the most unique controllers in the indie scene for sure um, the game comes with a longboard wheel and a button so the button is your acceleration um, as you hit it you speed up as you stop hitting it, you slow down but the longboard wheel goes up and down and that moves you vertically on the screen um, all you do is you move vertically and then the speed moves you uh, horizontally so Try and stay alive as you as long as you can, but you don't want to get too close to the front of the screen because if you run into something, you die. So you got to prep it out and just try and beat your high score from the last game. Retro Raccoons is another game that I am still wanting to interview, get them on the show. Uh, Adam is the guy behind Retro Raccoons, and Retro Raccoons is an arcade-only game with a cheers mode requiring players to have a drink. So basically you have a drink, you can place it into the cup holders, and as the game goes on, you have to drink. This game can be played with a beverage that is alcoholic or non-alcoholic in a bottle, can or common glassware. Two to four players compete in a collection of mini games and trivia questions with a one button and joystick. Players of all ages of the game experience can participate. So think about this game as like a Mario Party drinking game kind of thing. Um, you step up to the cabinet, you can be drinking whatever you want to drink. Uh, there's no pressure to drink alcohol in this if you don't want to. But you can place your bottle into the weight as you play. If you lose, you got to drink, things like that. Game is super fun. It's tons of little mini games. And I think Adam's really got something here with, uh, with Retro Raccoons. Now, the last game I'm going to talk about is Nave. Nave is one that's really unique to me uh, because it's a game from Argentina. And there's not a lot of games being made in South America in the indie scene. This is the only one that's actually international that I'm covering in this episode. And Nave is a survival space shooter, um, or as they call it, a resistance game. So you grow your spaceship and you resist as much time as you can by dodging and shooting enemies, grabbing power-ups, and controlling the difficulty by using the turbo feature. Um, there's a handful of power-ups that you can shoot on the screen. It's got kind of like a Galaga vibe to it. Uh, the difference is instead of getting a power up and just having like one immunity, you collect them continuously and your ship continues to grow. So the bigger you get, the more the screen you take up, the more angles you're shooting from, but the more difficult the game gets as well. The goal here is to just resist as long as possible. One thing that's really unique about Nave is they only have one cabinet in the world. Like there's only one and they don't really have plans to produce more from what I understand. They like having that one cabinet, so it's very exclusive to play Nave. They hold international tournaments every year. Um, they do it in Argentina primarily. They have taken the game all over the country or all over all over, yeah, like South America. They've gone on tour with it. And they did something very unique a while back because they wanted more people to be able to play internationally. So they created a robot that actually holds a joystick and the button, and you can play remotely on this one cabinet. So the one cabinet holds all the high scores and everything, they always have control of it. And that's a really, really cool feature. They are finally opening back up to getting everybody in international tournaments, and they're super active in South America. 
this is one that you really need to check out. And I, I hope they will make more because I would love to bring them to the U.S. so that more people can enjoy Nave. Now, that's the majority of the games that I have covered on the show. There are a few other ones that I've interviewed, such as Yell. And there are a couple of those that I've just been kind of turned on to that I'm looking into, hopefully to get them on the show as well. But that was the indie games. Those are the majority of the indie arcade games in the scene right now. I believe Glitch Bar down in Fort Lauderdale has all of these games, and that's why I'm wearing the, the Glitch Bar shirt. But these games can be found all over the United States, and a handful of them are international. So if you are looking to check out any of these games, um, I'm going to have links in the description so you can see their social medias as well as check out their website to see where they're at. If you're interested in purchasing any of these games, let me know. I will connect you with the developers and we will get the game in your arcade. Arcade owners are what are helping us grow this scene. And this is a very, very unique scene considering the majority of these games are arcade exclusives. In this day and age, not a lot of people are making arcade only games. So if you're interested, let me know. Uh, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's just going to help us grow, help us bring you more episodes covering this scene and the arcade scene as much as we possibly can. But until next time, peace.